Hello everybody, this is General Yanis, and today in Chaos Tactics, um, it's time for the Black Lord Terminator special, uh, deep diving into the math hammer uh, of the Black Lords and the, the leaders that can buff them. So let's see what our Terminators can do in 10th edition. So with no further ado, let's get started. So today the 4th of July, and a very happy 4th of July to the US uh, viewers. Um, I haven't been to, uh, to the 4th of July celebration, but I heard in the radio that uh, they will try more uh, using drones instead of fireworks. But let's see, I hope you enjoy uh, your, your uh, nice time there. Uh, but as I said in this video, looking at the Blight Lords, uh, doing the, the analysis and a lot of math and a lot of tables here. Uh, so uh, looking first at the data sheet, the war gear options, the weapons uh, baseline damage comparison, then looking at ways to buff the, the damage output with the leaders and, and other combos, the strats, etc. Looking at the buff dam uh, da weapon damage output, putting forth some squad ideas, and then comparing the, the squad uh, damage outputs and point corrected damage with the leaders included. Finally, looking at the durability, which is of course one of the strong points of the Blight Lord Terminators. So let's uh, take a look at the data sheets. So taking a look at the Black Lords data sheet, um, they got a, quite a significant point cut since 9th edition. So they are basically the cheapest terminators in the 10th edition. So uh, a squad of 5 is 175 points and a squad of 10 is 350 points, so 35 points per model. Uh, unfortunately, the move has been um, has been reduced as we have seen before. 4 inch move for, for the terminators from 5. So that could be, uh, yeah, Games Workshop doesn't have mercy on us there. Uh, getting a pip of toughness, toughness 6, and then a 2 plus save, 4 plus invul save, bringing basically the, the durability here. But of course, no no damage reduction or feel no pain or something like this. They have a quite nice rule, the blister and fusillade. So ranged attacks, uh, if you target the closest eligible uh, enemy, you can reroll once to wound, basically getting the old plague weapons rule, but it's only for the ranged and it's only for the closest enemy. Um, and then uh, we have some simplification of the weapons. Previously there was always the discussion of axe or sword for your Blight Lord Terminators. Now basically the axe and sword is basically called bubotic blades uh, and it has the same profile. It's uh, it's four attacks, strength five, AP minus two, damage one weapon. Um, also simplification for the combi weapons, uh, basically the combi meltas or combi plasmas that we have been using. This is basically now a combi weapon profile, uh, anti-infantry 4 plus with devastating wounds. This means that 4 plus uh, uh, to wound versus any type of infantry will become mortal wounds here. So this is a more mortal uh, anti-infantry weapon, but, uh, but only let's say one attack at 24 inch range and two attacks at 12 inch range with a combi weapon. In general, like we've seen for most of the 10th edition weapons, uh, we have a loss of AP. Uh, most of the weapons uh, of Death Guard have lethal hits. Uh, and basically the, the thing that stands out is the Reaper Autocannon that has devastating wounds and sustained hits. Uh, nice uh, 4 attacks and strength 7. But, for example, the Blight Launcher losing AP, AP-1 there. Uh, and uh, But, of course, it has the, the lethal hits. So if we look at the war gear options, um, quite a big freedom now uh, taking taking weapons. And as always, now in 10th edition, with the po power level points, basically you can take uh, any configuration of weapons for the same for the same unit cost. So basically, you have the the shooting normal weapons. Let's call them that. The ba the basic standard weapon is the combi bolter. Uh, up to three per five models can replace their combi bolters with these combi weapons that we discussed. So basically, if you model them with combi meltas or combi plasmas, now it's it's basically called the combi weapon. There is also the possibility to add some shooting, let's say, special weapons. You have one in five models. Uh, it can take a blight launcher or a reaper autocannon. This is basically your where you can you cannot both take blight launchers or reaper autocannon. You have to select one of those, and I'll show you in the next page which one is the best. Uh, and then uh, you can also, uh, one per five, can take a, a spewer. Um, the spewer, of course, a nice anti-infantry and 12-inch uh, range, and nice for the for the overwatch. Uh, and then in melee, there is uh, basically the standard are, are these bubotic blades that covers both the axes and the swords that we have used so far. 
and uh, we can, one in five, can replace their combi bolter and the bubotic blade for a flail of corruption, uh, giving more attacks and um, in them, um, but but not so high AP for the for the flail. Uh, but the flail, um, uh, you can yeah, one one in five, and then you don't have shooting from that model, just just the flail. So taking the first uh, table of the of the day, so this is the Blight Lords, all their weapons, their baseline damage output versus a variety of targets from 10th edition. Uh, and here I'm just showing you the numbers. If you are not shooting at the closest enemy, if you're shooting at the closest enemy, you will have a little bit more damage output, re-rolling once to wound. But in the, the first two weapons are basically the, the Plague Combi Bolter and the Combi Weapon, assuming we are at 12 inch range here for, for the maximum number of attacks. And we can see uh, the, the combi bolter is better than the combi weapon for most of the targets. Uh, the only exception is elite infantry like terminators or blight lords here. You can see here where the combi weapon uh, with its anti-infantry 4 plus uh, devastating wounds is better against those targets. But for, for all the other targets including the vehicles and the, the plague combi bolter with lethal hits um, and uh, double the number of attacks and a better hit hit rate is, is the better option uh, here. But of course, play combi boulders with AP0, it's not it's not a super effective weapon. You can see one play combi boulder can do 0 0.3 wounds on average on, on a vehicle here. And then we are comparing on the next two lines the Reaper Auto Cannon and the Blight Launcher. Uh, and you can see for all the targets the Reaper Auto Cannon is is better than the but the Blight Launcher double amount of, of shots, sustained hits giving it potentially more, more shots and devastating wounds, 62 wound deal mortal wounds instead gives it an advantage and also with a 36 inch range uh, compared to blight launchers 24 inch range there is no point in using the poor blight launcher uh, and followers of the channel will know that uh, the blight launcher is always uh, has always been my favorite weapon but but now the Reaper Auto Cannon, the math is, is quite clear it's the best weapon for, for shooting for the Black Lord Terminator. You can see the comparison there. The Reaper Auto Cannon doing much more wounds, uh, for example, compared to the Plague Combi Bolters, uh, more than uh, three, four times the damage output. So you should include your Reaper Auto Cannon in, in any case. Then we have the, the option for the Plague Spure. And if we are into the 12 inch range, we can see also good damage output, especially versus infantry. It has anti infantry 2 plus. Uh, can do a, one wound on a, on a Terminator and that's quite good also for the Spear is also good for the Overwatch strat when the enemy moves closer to your Blight Lords and you could shoot with your Spear. Uh, of course not, not very strong against vehicles, we see that the Reaper Auto Cannon is better, but the combination of Plague Spear and Reaper Auto Cannon is the best, let's say, shooting configuration here. And then when we go to uh, to the melee weapons, uh, the, we see the comparison of the bubotic blade and the flail of corruption. Flail of corruption is six attacks. The bubotic blade is is four. Uh, the the bubotic blade at least has an AP minus two. The flail of corruption is unfortunately only AP minus one. But we see for most of the targets, the flail of corruption is better. But then you are losing the shooting from this blight lore because yeah, the the combi bolter or combi weapon you could have there. Uh, but of course, if you want more melee orientation, you should add uh, the the flail of corruption uh, guy in in your squad. And of course, uh, very crucial to the tenth edition, the ability, the possibility to add leaders to the squad to further buff your units. Uh, the leaders available to buff your war, uh, your blight lords are with uh, are the the characters with Terminator armor. And we're starting here with the popular Lord of Ireland's. He's 115 points now. And his leader ability uh, allows uh, the squad he's in to reroll all two wound rolls in range attacks. But the Blight Lords already could reroll some uh, uh, some of the uh, the wound rolls as we saw if they are targeting the closest the closest enemy. Um, and um, the Lord of Ireland, of course, he can still bring some nice shooting with his uh, Plague Spewer and uh, and further synergy with his uh, Blight Bombardment for blast weapons. If you have backfield plague verse crawlers, I, I've made a video about this combo. Uh, so the Lord of Ireland is probably not only worth bringing to buff the unit he's in, but he he can do this uh, combination with, for example, the plague verse crawlers, um, 415 points. 
the Lord of Contagion, his leader abilities that he gives reroll all to hit in melee, probably best paired with the Death Shroud, but he can, as you can see, in the, you will see in the data later on, he can do also some, something good with, uh, with the Blood Lord Terminators. Uh, his Abundance of Sickness is a bit uh, May ability, let's say. Every time he loses a wound uh, in, in melee, you can maybe deal one mortal wound back. It's not very strong, and I would really have liked that the, the Chaos Lord uh, in Terminator Armor ability would have been on the Lord of Contagion. He should be spreading sickness just by being on the table instead of just when being wounded. He has a strong melee weapon, uh, and we'll see what he can do for the 100 points. And then uh, Typhus uh, is, is 115 points. Also, uh, he has the, the leader abilities more defensive, so uh, when a melee attack is, uh, is targeting the Blight Lords in this case, you would, the enemy would subtract one from the hit roll, uh, but it's not helping for shooting. That would also have been quite strong if he had the, his flies to protect the squad. Uh, and he has the Eater Plague that can deal mortal wounds to enemies, but he could be uh, wounding a, a Terminator here. So maybe it's better to use Typhus with a, a big squad of Foxwalkers because he can revive those by the mortal wounds he will be dealing with the, with the Eater Plague. The Typhus, of course, also can add some nice melee damage to the squad. And then continuing with uh, the more generic, uh, let's say, Chaos Leaders available to, to add to a Blight Lord squad, we have the Chaos Lord in the Terminator armor for 100 points, and where, while he's a leader, then um, he, he can give rerolls, uh, one to hit for, for all the attacks, both, so a nice boost for both uh, melee and, um, and ranged shooting, while as we saw, Lord of Ireland is only boosting the, the shooting and... Uh, the, the Lord of Contagion only boosts the, the, the melee attack. He has a nice uh, aura for desiccation conduit, and if you are close to him, then in Contagion of the Chaos Lord, for, on 4+, plus, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds at the end of your turn. That's a nice combo, and yeah, as I said before, why couldn't they have given this to the Lord of Contagion? Why should we try to find some model uh, resembling a Chaos Lord in Terminator armor? Anyway... He also has, he can get some nice weapons for, for melee, uh, the, the, a plague feast, for example. And then the sorcerer in the Terminator armor, he's only 80 points, and his leader ability is the Potrescent Vitality, and I think this is quite a strong, uh, very strange wording for this ability. So in the fight phase, you can select one enemy unit within 18 inches and visible to the Psyker. Uh, if you roll a 1, your Psyker's unit will be suffer mortal wounds, or otherwise on a 2+, uh, every time uh, melee is is uh, is fighting against the blight lords that he's, he has been um, joining, then uh, we get uh, minus one damage. So basically, dis disgusting resilience. But why do you need to see an enemy within 18 inches? Is basically something he's casting on on your own unit. So yeah, I think that's that's a bit that's a bit strange. Uh, it could have just been uh, roll uh, a dice for your own unit, and on a one you hurt yourself. I don't know. He also adds some psychic attacks. Um, and again, disgusting resilience on the sorcerer in Terminator armor, that could have been, uh, yeah, could be some of the more death cardy uh, characters. Anyway, uh, and then uh, if we are looking at, at buffs that are not, uh, let's say, from leader characters, the Demon Prince can give a 6 plus feel no pain. He has an aura for that. Mortarion has also some auras that uh, allow, uh, for example, the Blood Lords to ignore modifiers. Uh, he can also be giving them reroll ones to wound that they are getting versus the closest enemy anyway, or they can, he can give them a benefit of cover, which can be quite helpful if they are out in the open. And then looking at the the other buffs uh, from, for example, our, our stratagem, uh, if we want to, bu uh, to boost the shooting further, then the Ferric Blight stratagem for, um, for one command point can improve the AP of the weapons, giving some AP to the, to the combi bolters, for example, if the enemy uh, if if we are in close to the contagion range of an infected objective marker, the enemy, then you would be, and you make a critical wound, then you can improve the AP by two here. But ferric blight, overall quite good, and the boil blight uh, for one command point allows us to ignore cover when we are shooting, and gives the heavy the heavy uh, keyword that if we, if we remain stationary, we will be hitting on on plus one. So two, two plus to hit, for example, for the Blight Lord Terminator, so everything that targets an enemy unit, the Boil Blight is, is quite quite good. 
In melee, of course, we can boost the damage output with the Sankus Flux, giving sustained hits one or two if we are in range of our own objective. Uh, this, of course, uh, yeah, works only in melee. And then uh, stratagems that can boost our durability. Cloud of Flies for, for one command point, minus one to be hit in shooting. That can be quite nice in the 10th edition where shooting seems to be the, the way to go. Uh, and then in melee we have the Disgusting Resilience. Unfortunately, two command points to get minus one damage in melee. And this is where Typhus could be giving that for... Uh, or the, the Sorcerer in Terminator armor can be, give, can be giving that with no paying of command points. And now some of the, the boosts and the buffs that we can give to improve the weapon damage output. Here you see two tables. The first one is uh, the baseline, uh, let's say the damage output versus infantry for all the weapons that the Blight Lords can have from the Plague Combi Bolter to the Flail of Corruption and Bibotic uh, Blade. So the first column uh, is the baseline. If, if the Blight Lords attack the closest enemy in ranged, they get to reroll once to wound. And there you can see the increasing in the in the in the damage output by 10, 50, 15 percent there. If we add the Lord of Ireland, they will be re-rolling all to wound in, in ranged. And here we can see 20 to 40 percent, 46 percent damage increase for the for the different weapons here um, um, compared compared to the baseline. So Lord of Ireland can improve the, um, the the damage output of the shooting weapons, not on the on the not on the melee weapons of course and if you look at the table below you can see that the increase the damage increase versus vehicle uh, per percentage wise is is higher because then we have more trouble wounding and re-rolling all to wound rolls there with the lord of ireland's helps us more um but of course lord of ireland's is quite a significant cost to to get this uh, this buff Anyway, uh, in the next step we have the Lord of Contagion. If we are the Lord of Contagion, we don't get any any boost to the to the damage output of the shooting weapons, but we see 46% damage uh, increase for the for the melee weapons, giving the reroll to hits, and this is the same for for vehicles. If we look at the Chaos Lord in the Terminator armor with rerolling once to hit, we get 17% more damage output. Uh, for all the weapons, also the melee weapons and the shooting weapons, not the Plague Spear, of course, because this is auto-hitting. If we add the Ferric Blight stratagem, we can also get uh, uh, some nice damage output percentage-wise. Uh, if we look at, for example, the, the Plague Combi Bolter, this is, this is quite strong. The Ferric Blight doesn't really help the combi weapon, because for most of the infantry or, or even the vehicles here, it's basically wounding on, on sixes and doing mortal wounds, so the AP doesn't really the AP boost doesn't really help the the plague the, the combi weapon, but some nice damage increase for for all our weapons. AP is in shortage, let's say in the tenth edition. Uh, and if we take the boil blight uh, stratagem, and assuming we are stationary, plus one to hit, uh, this is, they can also give 20-30 percent more damage increase. Uh, the sangus flux uh, stratagem. Uh, if we are if we're not in an objective we can get uh, more damage output let's say 20% and up to 40% if we are uh, near an objective uh, so some of the some of the best uh, let's say uh, shooting buffs is the lord of ireland's and then we have the the lord of contagion for the for the melee further uh, combinations with the stratagems can further increase the damage so some initial squad ideas now that we've seen all the weapons and the buff damage let's say if we want to focus more on long range shooting then we should be taking uh, let's say if we are having a five man squad then we should take the reaper auto cannon and then keep the the combi bolters if you take the 10 man squad of course you should double up on this weapon so two reaper auto cannons and eight combi bolters and in this case the possibility probably the best possibility if you want to keep them at range is the Lord of Ireland's here to boost their their durability, their their shooting, or just leave them with with only the the weapons uh, here? Uh, if we want to make a more medium range squad, maybe to go to the midfield and take some objective there and stay there and do some shooting at at both medium medium and long range, then we should be adding the spear here. Uh, again, if you double up uh for for a 10 man squad you would yeah you would take two reaper arcanos two spewers and six combi bolters here uh, you could be adding the lord of ireland's here or the chaos lord in terminator armor 
This is primarily for his aura to spread mortal wounds here. And then if we, um, if we want to also to focus on melee damage output, then we should also add the flail. We're losing a little bit of the shooting, but the flail will increase the damage in melee. Uh, and in this case, uh, the Lord of Contagion could be an, an option, uh, or Typhus or Sorcerer for the, to add some, some durability in, in melee, or the Chaos Lord again to in Terminator armor to spread mortal wounds and be protected maybe in a big big squad of Blight Lord Terminators. And then if you really want to focus on the anti-elite infantry, if you're facing a lot of Terminators from the other enemy, then you could take, let's say, the Reaper Autocannon, the Spear, and the Combi Weapons instead of the Combi Bolter, uh, maybe with the Lord of Ireland here. The, yeah, the Combi Weapons, as we saw in the better than the combi bolters only versus elite infantry now comparing these uh, the various squads uh, damage output uh, from the blight lords and this is not point corrected and we start for example at 24 inch range just for comparison here we have five blight lords with only combi bolters and you can see that the damage that they are doing uh, on average versus infantry on average versus vehicle and four different units it's not it's not super super strong here 0 0.6 wound on on sub terminators or less than one wound on vehicles if we add the reaper auto cannon we can be doing a little bit more damage if we add the lord of ireland's uh, again we can we can add more damage but at 24 inch range uh, we, we don't have so many shots from the combi bolters so it's very quite difficult to do a lot of damage you can't kill a terminator from from range let's say could be taking out six termagants with a lot of Ireland's here. When we move into 12 inch range shooting territory, uh, here you can see the damage increasing when we add the Reaper Auto Cannon and then when we add the, the Spewer. If we add the combi weapons, as we as you see, we have some nice damage versus the Terminators, but still one one kill terminator from a from a five-man squad. Uh, and then if we add, you can see if we add the, if we have the combi boulders and then we have the Lord of Ireland's here, we get a better damage output. If we combine the Lord of Ireland's and the Fairy Blight for the 12 inch range shooting, uh, we can be killing almost four intercessors and almost two terminators uh, and do four, four wounds uh, against vehicles or something like this. But we can take out, let's say, almost 10 Necron warriors here with this, with this combo. And then when we come into melee, the Blight Lords are still doing more damage in melee than in, than in shooting here. Uh, you can see here we, we um, as a baseline, with a, just with the Bubotic Blades and let's say, uh, assuming we just have the other, the other shooting weapons. Uh, and then if we have the, the one Flail, this also improves the damage. And you can see when we add Lord of Contagion re-rolling all to hit in melee, we can start doing some, some nice damage here. Six Intercessors killed, eight wounds on Terminators, that's two two kill terminators here, eight wounds on vehicles, and uh, let's say you can take out 13 uh, Necron Warriors in, in melee. Uh, and if, of course, if we have 10-man squads, you can double the values uh, that you see here, actual uh, damage output from the Blight Lords. And in this table, I'm summarizing basically what you saw in the previous table, but now I, I'm looking at the different squads, what do they do in the different range, and now it's point corrected. So this is the damage per 100 points. Uh, we have here the contagion, of course, as always in the tables. In melee, the contagion is always accounted for. In shooting, I'm not assuming that you have something that is tagging the, the enemy and giving the minus toughness. And here I also have added the, the Blight Lords and the Death Shroud for comparison. So in the Blight Lords, I, I, I take a configuration where one of the Blight Lords has a Flail, one has a Reaper Auto Cannon with devastating wounds, one has a Spewer, and the rest are Combi Bolters and, and their standard Bubotic Blades. And then the Death Shroud, they, they here, of course, the champion gets the extra Plague Spurt Gauntlet. And if we look at the the, this is the first edition basically where Blight Lords are matching the Plague Marines damage output per point. The Blight Lords have become much, much cheaper and uh, the Plague Marines have become more, more uh, let's say, expensive and the Blight Lords get more free weapons now. So we can see here, for example, at 12 inch range, the Blight Lords do 2.5 wounds versus infantry. If we compare that to some of the other squads, we are, we are in, this, in this area also with the Plague, Plague Marines 
Taliban's Long Ranger squad does three wounds on average here at 2.5, but it's not like they are substantially better than the Blight Lords. The Blight Lords could also be buffed by Lord of Ireland's, having included that in this comparison. And if we look in, into melee, we have the Death Shroud. They are still the highest uh, melee damage dealers here. You can see uh, versus infantry, 5.7 wounds per 100 points across infantry. The best, the best melee squad here for Plague Marines is 4.8. Uh, so the Death Shroud uh, are outmatching in melee, as expected, uh, still, versus the Plague Marines. And again, the Death Shroud could also be buffed by Lord of Contagion or something like this. And if we look at the, the monsters as well in melee, the Death Shroud are, are, uh, do higher damage. If we look at the long-range shooting, Taliban's long rangers do more damage than the, than the Blight Lords in this scenario. So reaching now to the final table of the of this um, this video, the durability, and this is point corrected to 100 points, and this basically is showing for a variety of let's say enemy weapons firing or attacking the the units here. Uh, how many of those weapons here from the storm bolt or up to a plasma incinerator or a melta gun or something like this? How many of those uh, weapons are required to shoot or attack the unit to take out 100 points worth of this of this unit? So for example, you would take 58 uh, Storm Bolters to take out 100 points of the Blight Lords. Uh, if you look at some good weapon like the, the Spoiler Gatling Cannon with its very high attack, this is basically an infantry killer uh, weapon. Uh, here you would Despoiler with two, two, um, two Despoiler Gatling Cannons, then this would be doing, uh, with two of these weapons, you will be taking out 100 points worth of, of Blight Lord Terminators. And in the average here of the Blight Lord Terminators, uh, you can see the average of all these these weapons I selected here. It can take much more pounding per hundred points than the Death Shroud, uh, basically with same similar defensive profile. But the Blight Lords are are cheaper here, and the Plague Marines they they are having a three plus save and no invul save. This um, of course makes them le much less durable than the Blight Lords, um, and the durability of the Blight Lords can be buffed by Typhus, for example, minus one to be hit. Shooting durability can be, you can use the strat, the cloud of flies, um, and then if you get minus one to, to be hit, then this typically allows you to take 33% more, more shots than shown on this table. Uh, in With the discussion resilience in melee or the sorcerer terminator armor, we can get discussion resilience that would be quite strong against power fists and things like that. And also, as always, if you try to keep your units in cover, plus one to save, that will really benefit the, the Terminators and with the 10th edition rules for cover using some ruins or some terrain to, to, to not be fully visible then you would be getting some, some good cover saves. So reaching to the summary and final thoughts um, we the Blight Lords are the, the cheapest uh, Terminator unit um, we've seen some nice point cut but I think in my opinion the loss of the movement hurts uh, if you if you don't get, let's say, you you can't you can't uh, run around uh, quickly to to get to your targets, um, the the damage output per point is better than than the plague marines now in in many cases at at least per point. Previously in the previous editions, the blight lords had more durability going for them, and uh, and but the plague marines had more lethality. Now the blight lords, I think, are a better choice than the than the plague marines. The Reaper Auto Cannon is their best weapon, in my opinion, and it's strictly better than the Blight Launcher here. Uh, you can add the Spewer for the for the medium range uh, fire. You can add the Flail to add more into melee. So basically, some squad like you like you see on the on the screen that that's probably a a good <laughs> a good uh, combination here. Um, the Lord of Ireland can buff the shooting damage by itself. It's not enough uh, per point to 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 work, but he has the added effect for guiding the, the mortar fire from the Plague Burst Crawlers. The Lord of Contagion can boost the melee damage. You, need a, you would need a good delivery system, maybe deep strike them or use a rapid ingress with, in this, uh, at the opponent's turn or use a land raider, but that's quite expensive in that. And the Typhus and, uh, and the Sorcerer in Terminator armor can improve durability. The Chaos Lord in Terminator armor with the Blight Lord, that could be quite fun to, to spread the, his, uh, his sickness on the table, dealing mortal wounds. Uh, but probably, yeah, there, there are some, some other combos here. 
a pity we can't add virion leaders uh, for for the terminators uh, this is this is what we got uh, so this uh, concludes the the video what do you think about the the blight or terminators i uh, hope the weapon analysis here uh, has been quite helpful for you guys to plan your squads and let me know in the comments uh, if you have played with uh, Blight Lord uh, Terminator Heavy Army and how it went. Uh, if you want to, uh, yeah, if you like this video, please press like and subscribe to the channel where there will be a lot more videos for Death Card and other Chaos Factions for the 10th edition. Uh, if you want to further discuss some of this, uh, these items, you can visit the Discord channel in the description. If you want to further support my efforts uh, to bring you this, all this analysis that is very time consuming, please visit my Patreon page or become a YouTube member. And with these words, uh, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.